Virgo singles, welcome to your November singles reading. Meet the soulmate reading. This is an always positive read. These eight cards, and I simply ask Spirit who's the right one for Virgo. Who's Virgo's soulmate? So if you see a three of swords or something, you know, one's breaking up with you, it's um, uh, just trying to get an idea of what your person's like. I see this as a predictive read. Wouldn't be someone in your life yet. Someone's coming. This is for totally singles and completely singles. Um, the runway's cleared. Your person comes down and lands. And we're going to meet them, this one that's right for you, and get to know them a little bit. I'll uh, get some astrology from it. Um, we'll get um, their behavior, um, some stories they might tell, pick up things about their childhood, see, might see what they do for a living, and um, look at the uh, sexual and love nature as well as we go along with these eight cards, guys. So we're starting out with the moon. This is in the emotional nature of your person where I do read the moon. So thank you for that. I have to say Pisces with that one. So we know it's a Pisces moon. And this is the moon under the six of wands. Again, in the emotional energy. Um, let me look at their intellectual nature. The eight of wands. And justice. So, Pisces Moon, that looks like an airy sun to me. Um, airy sun and a Pisces Moon we're looking at, guys, in terms of the astrology. Um, it's the easiest part, the Six of Wands. This person had a pretty good childhood. That's a little bit rare in itself, I, I, I think. Um, they may have been an only child. And their parents might have been kind of younger. Um, and I get the sense that they're, the person's attractive. This person's probably attractive. Um, I get the sense that their parents were attractive. Um, their parents were probably like athletic. And now you have Aries, Sun. The Justice card, Libra energy under that. This is in the intellect. They have quite a balance. This is bringing in air energy here. It's got to be Gemini. But we could get it into Libra by putting it in the seventh house. And this, I would read Mercury here. So Mercury and Gemini, Sun and Aries. Mm -hmm. That could be Moon and Pisces. So I think with Justice there, um, they would be someone that's beautiful. Uh, I think you might think Libra around them because I think they'd probably be deferential, uh, very social, the kind of person that it seems like it's a, uh, you wouldn't think of an Aries like this. It's, well, it's the opposite. Uh, you'd think they're just rash and do what they want. And, you know, that's, that's often not the case, right? Because of the other, uh, influences. And so this person, um, is not that way at all. They come across, in terms of your interacting with them, uh, very charming and um, kind of a perfect way. Um, you know, we're really listening, um, showing a lot of interest. Um, with this Eight of Wands, this Aries, uh, very kind of fast uh, mind. Um, and, it, you know, Gemini, uh, as a Mercury is no slouch either. I mean, they're perfectly at home there. Uh, but the combination, um, it's almost better than having like an Aries Mercury can jump the sun or something. This is like a really fast energy here. Mm. So, 
um, it would be very quick-witted, but it, it wouldn't uh, be any kind of a biting to it. It'd probably be like just a little bit like charming as hell, uh, pushing maybe over the top. Um, it, charming, I think, is a big word with them. Uh, but I think like they get it uh, get away with it because uh, I think a lot of what they do might be a little bit tongue in cheek. They get this little bit of tongue in cheekness about it, and I think they're just they really are charming, and I think they're they're graceful and debonair and probably attractive man or woman, just uh, basically attracted to someone, um, non offensive, um, unassuming, this kind of energy affable sexually seven of swords energy uh, look at Venus there typically and judgment coming in with the Mars energy um, and this their sexual love nature and let me look at their lifestyle core values the devil here Capricorn energy and the nine of Pentacles and a more Capricorn energy um, before I get to the sexual part, I um, often see the core values and lifestyle more related to the intellect here. But this is a person, I'd say, like a worldly. Uh, they, as charming as they are, they, they understand the dark side of life. And I don't see this devil as representing any kind of addiction or anything nor really obsession um, they may make their living in some way when I saw justice I thought something in the legal system I mean this could be any anything in the criminal justice system um, this could be the military And I think what you can count on this person down here with this Nine of Pentacles is they kind of just have their shit together. Nine of Pentacles is personal as you can get. There's nothing major con about it. And it's coming under the devil. And it's like um, pretty heavy energy to come in with the moon, that major con. You know, Pisces moon it could be very uh, vulnerable, very empathic type of energy that maybe balances them. I, person might be incredibly intuitive and stuff like that um, but they understand the dark side of life you know um, they're not going around saying you know uh, everything is love and light and there's no problems and uh, I'm sure this person here is not gonna hurt us it's like at the same time that they're so charming and things um, they're uh, in a second, I mean, they probably could defend themselves and they're ready to. And um, they can see, like, the dark side of things. And that goes into the sexual stuff. So with an Aries, Sun, and this got to be a Gemini Venus here with the Seven of Swords. Hmm. I think I like a Taurus Mars for this person with the judgment. Because out of all that, that's what this feels like. In Taurus energy with judgment, it's uh, they're really sexually going to do what feels like the right thing to them. There's a real sensuality about it, you know. Um, you have to take that as you may. And with the Gemini Venus, somebody can be flexible. Remember, this is your person. Say they're uh, perfect. Uh, but you might find someone here, the way this energy is all working, um, they probably... Um, have had a number of sexual partners. It's just uh, they're they probably just don't see that as a big deal. Um, they're very attractive, engaging. Um, I mean, unless they just happen to get married young, stay married or something, 
it just seems like the kind of person to me that would probably have experience, you know? And that's what I'm getting with the Seven of Swords, too. Um, you know, Gemini can go either way, um, masculine or feminine. Um, and I kind of really get feminine with this because then with the Mars being in Taurus, you know, that grounded earth energy. Uh, in the moon being in Pisces even if this is a man even if this is a soldier or a policeman or someone or a protector male um, I think when it comes to the bedroom it, it, they go soft um, when it comes to love and relationship um, they're going to communicate um, if they're at a job which is difficult to communicate, they may still find a way to pull aside and communicate with you during the day. Um, if they're at a job where it's easy to communicate, you may find yourself in, in their constant contact uh, with them, with this uh, Gemini um, Venus energy. Um, the Mars and um, Taurus could calm it down a little bit. Um, But yeah, I think that gives us a good idea about your person here. Um, so let me know uh, if you would. It's meant to be a predictive read. This may not be someone you meet right now. be sometime in November. That's a time frame. Um, so we've got a month here. And if you would, get back and let me know. Hit me up. Appreciate it, guys.